For me today, portable power has become a basic necessity, whether it's for charging drones, my laptops, my personal devices, or when I'm traveling with my family, camping, or in a motorhome. These days, portable power stations have got bigger and cheaper, and today we're gonna to take a look at a new one from Bluetti called the Elite 200 Vision 2. This is the largest portable power station I have ever seen. It has 2,074 watt hours of battery capacity, but not only that, it's also capable of supplying up to 2,600 watts of power on AC. There is also a really nice accessory available for this for people who have motorhomes called their Charger One that allows you to charge this portable power station at over 500 watts, allowing you to get it up to 80% capacity in just over an hour. On top of that, the power station also has lots of interesting features such as power pass-through, power lifting, and even has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality built in, allowing you to control it from anywhere in the world. Today, what we're gonna do is take a look first of all at the Elite 200 version two, and then we'll take a look at the DC charger. And then at the very end, I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Now, just before we get into this, I do need to be crystal clear in saying Bluetti did reach out to me and send these over to me to take a look at for free. They have not paid me though to make this video. They've not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so at the start, we're going to do a quick unboxing on the power station, and then I'm going to walk you through the main features. Now, this thing is rather large. It actually came as a two-man delivery. As I've said already, it is a 2,074 watt-hour power station. Let me just move that past my microphone because it was going to hit it, um, which is the biggest power station that I have had here. I've got a 1000 watt hour one over there, but this is double that. So in the box, we get this box, which sounds like it has some accessories in. We have our manual. And if I get past the foam, inside is the power station. I'm gonna lift this off to the side and try and lift this out. There it is. The unit itself. Now it comes in this giant bag, as you can see there. Let me get that out. Always do a sniff test on the bag. So there is the unit itself. It is incredibly heavy. Before we get on to that, we'll go through what comes in the box with the accessories. So in here, we have a typical AC mains adapter and we have a solar charge lead, which is an XT60 to your traditional solar inputs, DC PV inputs. So typical solar charger options because you can charge these off mains, you can charge these off solar, but you can also use that DC to DC charger that I spoke about earlier. And then there's also this, what's this? Oh, little screw, probably an earth screw. There's usually an earth plate on the side. Yes, there is, that's over there, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Okay, so to walk you over the main spec. Now, as I've said, it is rated at 2073.6 watt hour or 2074. It features life PO4 batteries rated at 54 amp hour. That should give you up to 80% capacity after 6,000 cycles. There is a number of different ports on this. So we've got our main AC input on the side for charging that allows up to 2,300 watts of power input. We also have an earth tag on the side there. And then on the front, we have all of our outputs on the AC side. This unit is capable of supplying up to 2,600 watts on the AC supply, but there is also a special power lifting mode available that allows you to push that as high as 3,900 watts with resistive devices. So for instance, if you were using it with kettles or any device that's a type of a heater, it will allow you to increase the wattage that these sockets can provide. We also have four USB ports along the front here as well. There are two USB-C ports, each capable of up to 100 watts. And then there are two USB-A ports, each capable of 15 watts. We have our traditional DC socket over here, supplying 12 volts up to 10 amps. And then above this, we have an XT60 socket. This socket supports 12 to 60 volts of input up to 20 amp max, allowing for up to 1000 watts of charging via that DC input. 
Now, if you're using it with solar, you're going to be able to take full advantage of that DC input. But if you are charging it from an accessory socket on your vehicle, you're obviously going to be limited to the maximum wattage that that can provide. However, that is where that Charger 1 accessory comes in, which we'll take a look at a little bit more later on, allowing you to charge that over 500 watts from your vehicle. One of the real nice features about this power station is its fast charging capability. You can actually dual charge with DC and AC up to 2,400 watts, allowing you to get it from 0 to 80% capacity in just over an hour. On the front, you'll also find a nice large display that not only shows you the current battery capacity but also gives you full information on how much power you're putting in as well as taking out via its outputs. On top of all of that you can also use it for pass-through charging and it also has built-in wireless functionality allowing you to control the power station from your smart device. We'll take a look at that a little bit more in a minute. Now, just taking a look around it externally, there isn't a great deal else to show you. On the front, obviously, you have all of that I.O. On the back, you've then just got your main rating plate showing you all the capacities. You then got the side with your power input, and there are two big fan inlets at the bottom. And then on the other side, you've then got, again, some more fan grills. Then on either side, you'll find a set of built-in molded carry handles. However, do take into account the sheer weight of this battery. The specs state it at 24.2 kilo so whilst you can lift it caution should be taken as i mentioned earlier this power station also has built-in bluetooth and wi-fi functionality you can actually use this not only to communicate with it from your smart device but you can attach it to your local network allowing you to control this power station from anywhere you don't even have to be at home you can control it remotely as it is communicating with the bluetti cloud service bluetti have an app that you can download from the relevant app store and when you open this you're then able to register your power station to the app once you've done that you're then able to control it now as i mentioned already this has two options you have the local bluetooth control and you have the cloud feature if you look up here in the top corner this shows a little picture of a cloud because it's currently connected on my local Wi-Fi network via the cloud. You can see we're currently plugged in. It's telling us that we're on grid. We've got 97% battery and it gives us an overview of all of the IO. So how much power we've got coming in via the DC PV, how much DC power there is going out, AC in, AC out. And then further down, you can see things such as the serial number. And then we've got the controls as well as statistics information for our power station. If we now wanted to control the outputs, that is really straightforward. We would simply then click on the option here. It's asking me to confirm. And there you will see the AC output has kicked in. And my little fridge on top has now started to work. The little LED on the back has powered on and then if I want to turn it off I can simply tell it to turn off and you can see there that it's off. You then have the main settings options. This gives you some additional information about the power station. So you've got the user guides, you've got the default connection method. So you can say, I want this to work on cloud or Bluetooth by standard. You've then got the carbon emissions information and then some additional settings like our power lift options as well as our eco options. As I've said, the remote control functionality on this is really, really handy. Not only local if you're on Bluetooth, allowing you to control it if you're in a tent or something like that, but also that cloud control feature that allows you to remotely control it from anywhere in the world, allowing you to control appliances or any other device that you may wish to switch on or off when you're not at home. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to be able to fast charge your Bluetti power station from your vehicle, you might want to consider getting yourself one of these, the Bluetti Charger 1. Now, this is a DC to DC charger. It's designed to take your battery input voltage on this side and then output your power station charger over here. Now, this device is designed to work with both 12 and 24 volt systems. It supports 12 to 14 volts input or 22.5 to 28, up to 50 amp max on the input. And that means it will output a standard voltage of 27 volts at 10 amps, meaning that you can charge your power station up to 560 watt. 
What's also nice about this is that it is also fully configurable via the Bluetti app as well. You can actually configure it to output different voltages. So you can output on 12 volt input, 15 to 56 volt output via the app, or on a 24 volt input, you can output 27 to 56 volt. And again, all of that is configurable by the app. It is designed to be used with the Bluetti power stations, but technically you could use this with any other power station that is on the market as well. Now to fit this is actually fairly straightforward. You've got your input terminals, you access them, screws under that little flap down there, and then you've got your output terminals over there. Also included with this is a very heavy duty set of cables. So we have an output cable, which has those solar PV connections on it for outputting from the unit itself and then you've got a big heavy duty DC input cable you can see we've got our battery terminals over here and then they've also included a circuit breaker with this as well which is rated at 63 amp again allowing you to be able to control the unit and then you've got your output there to go to your unit now this accessory kit is an optional extra with the Charger One. You can get it with or without from the looks of it, but it is a nice solution because it does have everything you need ready to go and your cables are also nicely protected as well. Now, obviously, portable power stations are not the most exciting thing in the world, but there's a lot of really interesting use cases for these outside of the usual things like camping, sports. I keep one in the back of my car all of the time. I keep either the big one or the smaller Bluetti one. That's the, if I need portable power on the go, you never know when you need to charge something or at least have mains capability. In the workshop, though, there are also lots of really handy use cases cases for a device like this, especially with the power pass-through feature. I use these on some big 3D prints to give me backup in the event of a power failure. Yes, most 3D printers have power failure recovery, but I don't even want to get to that stage. When I'm doing long multi-day prints, I like to use one of these as a backup. Often I'll find overnight I get weird power glitches here where I live, normally one or two seconds, and these absolutely smooth that out but i also use it on my main editing station i have portable power stations providing ups style functionality they really are multi-purpose devices today and whether you want to take them out for camping whether you want them in the workshop a device like this has all of the functionality to give you power on the go, massive battery, but also those extra features that do make it handy at home or in the workshop as well. So if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to this on the Bluetti website. That is in the description. Pricing of these do change all of the time. So please do check out the link to make sure you've got the latest pricing. Other than that, there really isn't a lot more that I will say other than if you're interested in getting one, check it out. Bluetti power stations have been some of the best ones that I've used. I have multiple of them and I'm building a bit of a battery bank around them as well. I'm going to probably make a video about that in the future. So do make sure you are subscribed if you're interested in seeing it. Anyway, that's it from me. Look after yourself, stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.